Vila. This is the face of fear. Oh yeah, he's scared. You can see it in his eyes, cause the eyes don't lie. He's like, what's going on? But what's going on is happening. He's saying, I ain't do shit, bruh. But he did. And he's also hoping Cam's not filming. But I am. We. Uh -huh. Wow. Well. Okay. So, uh, we got a gun in the car. Uh, I don't know what he's saying. But if I could uh, transmit this cop language, uh -huh. I don't think we're all supposed to be driving. Wow. Okay, so wrong. Say it. Wow, wow. I'm going to go to the I'm super. Don't you want to return to the Alex Central? No. You got to change. How much? I'm just going to give it uh, $10,000. Oh, it looks like you just pay on the spot here no. when uh, you get pulled over. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why do you make you feel like I'm Nelly, so why? What are you saying? I don't know. I'm confused. Oh my god! Kelly, tell him what, they, what he said. So, because of the fact, FEMA. Go here? Yeah. Because of the fact, Rome, like, we made a bad turn, the guy pulled us over, was asking for all these papers. He could see we're American. <laughs> and was about to take your ID and say we have to go to Central on, and bro. recover it. Mm. And I was like, no, we don't have time for that. We're going back to the States, like, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, well, what you want to do? Because I'm about to go. And I was like, okay, let me give you 10000 yeah. He was like, mm, if you want to. And so I tried to give it to him. He was like, no, 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 put it down, put it down. Oh, he want to put it in the paper? He said, put it inside this paper first. I'm like, this nigga right here. <laughs> this nigga right here. <laughs> He so, knew, you just got to pay him off. I think what happened, he looked straight in the car when we couldn't make the turn. He was like, oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, he uh, was oh, like, yeah. I got a mic right here. Because, like, he knows. If, I'm I'm so glad I'm here because oh, yeah. they would have oh, fucked y'all ass up. Oh, yeah. Try to make you go all the way to downtown. You would have had to pay. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I would have had to pay. He would have threw me to jail. I was like, brother, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Brother man. Uh, brother man. <laughs> and I would have wanted to pay him, but I'm like, I don't want to get no bribery charge. <laughs> he locked up abroad the car. Oh, oh no. Uh, that's what we don't have time for. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I'd be in the jail trying to speak Wolof and eating Jolof. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. First time driving, got pulled over in the car. Yeah. Now you're not driving no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's like 10.55, we're waiting on Ellie to get back so we can go to dinner. We're just outside waiting. And we're going to La, La, La Playa that we ate at the first night. So I'm probably gonna get the fish and some fries or try to see what else they got, but I'm definitely eating, I'm starving. Do it. I said, hey, yo, it's not Ice Cube, it's Rice Cube. Yay, yay! Here we go. Merci. Pardon, I'm Ben the Supplement Frit. So tonight I got the fish chips with the fries. Cause I'm hungry. I need a whole fish. She got some fritto. She ain't gonna finish that. She definitely not. Bro. He got the he got the ice cube rice <laughs> and the shrimp. We've been feeding these cats all night. So we feel bad for them. We got babies. And when we um. Through food, she let the babies eat first. I respect her, so I had to give her some more after that. I can respect that. Mom, she on mom duty, doing her thing, so. I gave her a bunch of fish. But yeah, man, that's all I got for y'all tonight, man. I'm sorry. God bless. Hey, y'all, look at Rome over here, ironing his salmon. He got two different color salmons on. He got the wild cut and he got the farm raised. <laughs> you salmoned out out here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? From one ocean to the next. You gotta take this to Alaska. <laughs> Go get some more, some Alaska salmon. <laughs> See, let me tell y'all something. My dad taught me this. I don't know how many people dad taught them this, but you take some, a paper bag, and when you got material, you don't want to mess up a burn, and you iron over it. So it helps. 
not, you know. Like, he's whole food bag pretty sturdy. Yeah, you know, this is salmon. You know, he made if something come out that iron, it's stained. That's, that's but if it come out the iron on top of the paper, only the paper stain. My dad taught me that in middle school. That's it. Thought it was genius. That's a great trick. Now look, it may be some things you can professionally buy out there. <laughs> I don't know, but that Bahamian way of doing things, I've been doing my whole life, and I have shared it with Rome. And how's it been going? It's been going pretty good. I like it. Okay. All right. So if you ever in there, you know, in a bind, you need something to press, just rip some paper. You pretty sure there's other ways, but everybody got some paper around there. Fly for somewhere. You got the paper somewhere. You you didn't bring that. I brought that, so you didn't. Sure. Right. So we going to Gory Island today. Good Me, good. LA, you guys Rome and Pop. We got Pop yeah, in man. the building. So we headed to Gory Island. We are gonna get on a, I think we gotta get on a boat man. and get over there. Everybody dripped up, dripped up. Bro, that great. boot across great. the street. It's gonna be heavy. That boot <laughs> It's gonna be very heavy. You said what's gonna be heavy? Gory Island. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. You'll see what I mean. Well, it's about the drip, drip, about the drip, oh, about to bring the drip to glory. Come on, man. That boy got the farm raised salmon oh, on salmon. fresh, oh, boy. He ain't cooking yet. Hey, put me on a plate, nigga. Come on, man. <laughs> Tell your girl, put him on a plate. Yeah. <laughs> so they over there arguing because one speaks English and the other one don't. And they trying to figure out who's going to be our tour guide. And they, they arguing. <laughs> My name is Ali, and I'm going to be your tour guide today, okay? All right. All right, so. Can you let them know where we at? Yeah, so we at uh, Gory Island right now, so, yeah. And I'll tell you everything about the island, okay? So then our guide took us around the island, showing us the history around different spots. But none was more impactful than the slave house. A little disclaimer, it might get heavy for some. All right, welcome to the slave house, everybody. This house was originally built by the Dutch in 1776. And it was the latest slave house beyond this island, also the most organized one. And that's the reason why history and the Minister of Culture of Senegal decided to keep it as an example. Now, women were selected depending on their ages and also their ability to have children. Concerning young girls, their prices were depending on their virginity. Their virginity was very expensive. In fact, all the young girls who used to come to this house, they used to first check them in here to see if they were virgins or not. Because there were more men coming here than anybody else, so they reserved five cents for them. Okay? This was an example. Come inside, please. Just to get the feeling of the cells. <coughs> Very small. So this was a typical cell here reserved to the man. And in this very small cell, they used to pack back in the slavery days between 15 to 20 men in chains. Okay? So minimum 15, maximum 20. They were all in chains on their hands and legs. Back against the wall, they were allowed only one time a day to use the toilet outside. Also, they were feeding them only once a day to maintain them. Now imagine if they went to the toilet during the day and at night, if they had some needs, they were forced to do it right on the floor while everybody was here. Also, the death rate in this house used to be very high. But during slave trade, no slave was allowed to be sick. If some of them were sick back then, they used to just take them out of the cells, tighten them, and throw them to the ocean without any questions. Mm -hmm. Because their concern was, if they leave some sick slaves among the rest of the slaves, they might contaminate everybody, and they might end up losing everybody. So that's why they did not take any chance with any sick slaves. That's the reason why also this island back in the slavery days used to be sadly called the island of the sharks. Because the sharks finally came and started swimming around the island due to the tremendous amount of people they used to throw and those sharks used to just get rid of them. And that's the only ventilation in there. That's the only ventilation here. And also all the cells back then had doors. 
this is the famous dog of no return. And the reason why they call it the dog of no return was that back in the slavery days, once the slaves put one step out, they never come back again. Never. So all the slaves who were sold in this house, they were living from this dog. To walk through the door your ancestors walked through for the last time is mind-boggling because you're battling with the duality of how you feel in this present moment and how they must have felt in theirs. I can tell you standing there I felt anger, sadness, and helplessness. And I can only imagine they shared the same sentiments. And I think this was the moment for all of us that it started to get a little bit heavy. How you feeling, Ellie? <laughs> It's a lot to do, and it's so sad. Yeah. Oh, God. So we have to hold this to go to the toilet? Yeah. This is, this is wild. And it's you have heavy. to be like this, because it used to be linked to a chain. So you have oh. to, you know? Oh, okay. Work with the chain, so. <clears throat> Let me hold it. You can't so, hold it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. And they used to have to walk like it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's pretty heavy. That's, that's heavy. We then checked out the owner's house where he lived and also entertained his guests. He would also go to his balcony to oversee the loading of the slaves. Yeah. Anytime the boat was loading, the owner used to be standing here, make sure that everything goes the right way. They used to have that long bridge I was talking to you about. So slaves used to just walk to get to the, to the boat. This is not loud because this is just sad. The boat is pulled up and the owner is staying right where we stand it and watch him and watch them just load up slaves. Watch them load up slaves. Like they not humans. Yeah, that's wild. After the slave house, we checked out some local artists that use sand as their medium to make paintings. So this is a very special gallery that they call the Sand Painting Gallery. It's a gallery where they just work with sands. All the sands that you see here are natural. And they were all collected around Senegal and the country surrounding Senegal. Right, so this is the most interesting part. And this technique of painting too is from the school of fine art that was run by the first Senegalese president, Mr. Lepo Sedasengor. So he made it in order to promote the African art. As Ellie and Rome learned to play their new instruments, y'all know what I was ready for. Yeah, I'm ready to eat. So that's the main thing on my mind. <laughs> So, you ready to eat? Absolutely. So we came here for dinner. I already forgot the name of it, but it is a vibe. Uh, beluga. What is it? Beluga. beluga. Like beluga whale. I was looking at these taco Brio wow. with the same between soft That's shell. But I think it's gonna be small because it's an appetizer. Wow. Raw sushi is busted. Tuna swap. Salmon swap. Got a little kick. Merci. Off sale slap. So I got the grilled teriyaki salmon with the potatoes and the egg fried rice. Mm. So he'll grace you. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna rate this out of five slaps. I give that salmon five slaps. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try the fried rice. Right, that's five slaps. Mm. I give that rice five slaps. Thank you. Five stars on the rice. Mercy, mercy. Jitter jiff. 
try the potatoes. Oh, that sandwich is nice. That sandwich is pretty good. Give that 2.5 slaps. Let me try one of them 2.5 slaps. Oh, here we go. Yep. Here we, we here. Here we freaking go. <laughs> it's early morning here, y'all. I like to get up when the sun rises. I always like to catch a the sunrise and everywhere I go. Catch the sunset wherever I go. I like to reflect, you know. That's how you grow and expand, to be honest. It's reflecting on life, reflecting on your goals. Especially early in the morning for me, so. But um, one thing I notice about Senegal is that there's not a lot of English spoken here. There's a lot of French and a lot of Wolof. And before I go anywhere, I try to learn like some common words like hi, thank you, no thank you. Um, this is the common, this common language of the place I'm traveling to because what I learned is that when you speak a common language, you connect to that person mentally. But when you speak their language, you connect to their heart. And I notice that whenever I speak their language, the response I get and the smile I get and the appreciation I guess I get for taking the time to even learn their language. So I would say when you travel into a you know, foreign place or out the country or whatever you want to call it, pick up on some of the language before you go. It goes a long way. So we got to take our COVID test so we can get back. In the States, so Rome gonna go next. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> Hold on now. All right now. <laughs> if it's in there, you got it. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. That's water. Oh, man. So we about to go do ATVs on water, a.k.a. jet skiing. And I'm excited because every time I was supposed to jet ski, something happened. Not here, but just in my lifetime. So this is my first time and I'm ready because y'all know I love ATV. So, you know, this is ATV and in water now. So I'm ready to get to it. So we just reached the hotel. Where we gonna jet ski yet? Nice day to jet ski, to be honest. The waters are calm. Perfect. One thing about me, I will never let my inner child die. And when you don't let that die, you say things like this. That's right, play. I don't even know what that means. My inner child is happy though. Middle of the ocean. And now we're going to jet ski. Ride. Bro back there riding, but he's scared to go fast. She just started and just already started in, the water. in the water. Ten seconds in. At least me and Cam stayed in out the water. water. Yeah, you're in the water, Ellie. Ellie in the water. <laughs> it's gonna be Ellie Tall Water. Ellie Tall Water. <laughs> Last day. We had a good dinner. Ellie ain't gonna need no dessert because she'll be a cake. <laughs> Checking out this view on this trip because I'll definitely be back. Maybe not staying here again. Nothing wrong with this place, but you know, I always like to try something new. But I just wanted to come out here and take this in. But I was just uh, praying and just showing my gratitude to God for bringing me out here and experience this and gain all these experiences and growth. 
want to let y'all take it in one last time. I just encourage all y'all to travel, travel in general, but definitely travel to Africa. And this man, get out there and experience the richness of life. Glad I set the tone for 2022, starting it off out of the country, traveling, on vacation, because that's the life I want, so that's what I've been manifesting, and that's what I'm going to go out there and do. i got more trips to go on this year, and I may take y'all with me, I may not, I don't know. It depends how y'all respond to this vlog, but yeah, don't want to go home, but got to go home. Every great thing must come to an end. Right now, this trip is coming to an end. Ten minutes. Alright, y'all. I, I gotta go. We did it, guys. We got all packed up. I don't know if y'all can see bro. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, all of this is Ellie. Yeah, it is. First of all, it's definitely Ellie. I only have three bags. Oh, oh, oh she said, I only <laughs> have three bags. And one of them is a carry on. <laughs> no, you guys aren't going to put this on me. We did a good job. This is more comfortable. How than many coming. bags we got, Ellie? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we are in the business lounge in the car. And it's very nice. Just had breakfast. Had a croissant with some eggs. And then she told me there was no meat in here, but it was meat in here. You see the little butt I took, I can't eat no more. And I had a beignet, this mango. We're almost over here. What's up, y'all? Ellie's over here. What's up? It's a nice one little lounge. Food's over there, so they got a certain food, but it's a whole vibe out here. We'll be getting on the flight soon. We got a layover in New York, JFK. Our flight's already been delayed. Here's the details. Um, our flight leaves from our layover at 3.45 because our flight was delayed here for Senegal, pushed an hour and a half back. We're landing like at 3.20 something. So we got about 25 minutes to get to the flight. So, uh, wish us luck. All right, y'all, so we just got off. Now we gotta wait for a bag. We're gonna try to make this flight. See what we can do. What time is it? 317. Our flight departs at 345. So I know they're already boarding. Hopefully it's a slow boarding process. Well we gotta wait, we gotta wait. We gotta wait for uh, Ellie. See, when, 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 when you travel with girls, <laughs> you, it's something, it's always gonna be something. Me and we're on travel, we don't miss shit. <laughs> we will be there, even if it's a, even if we got five minutes, we'll make it. So here's the update issue. We may have to go through customs, <laughs> and we still got a four minute walk, it says. <laughs> Once again, we will see. If we're not, we're just gonna have to book and get another flight. Let's claim baggage and recheck final destination. That's pretty much it. We'll be rechecking to another destination on another flight. Yep. So we just got this notification that we're rebooked. We have the, the date now to make sure that it's still business because I ain't flying nothing else in business after I pay for business. I'll go to first class. I ain't going back. So basically, they tried to put me in economy, 46B. I said, nah, B. So then they put us on the first flight, 7 a.m., all three of us, all business class. And they gave us vouchers for a hotel tonight and they gave us food vouchers and they gave us transportation vouchers. So we ain't gotta pay for the transportation to the hotel and back to the airport in the morning for the hotel room or the food we gonna eat at the hotel. So. Yep. So we about to go to the car now. Hey, this New York weather, different. It's cold out here. I am not used to this no more. It is cutting through these pants. Jeez. You can see how cold it is back there. You know, you know it's cold by the sky. When the sky got a gradient like my son. Right, so we use both of our.
a few food vouchers because they're fifteen dollars a piece, one for lunch, one for dinner. And uh, so got the Impossible Burger and I got some crab fritters. It comes up to forty three, so that's not very Dropping bags, $13 over the $30 limit, because that's what I do. So that's what we're doing, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> About to eat, chill, watch the game, sound like a good night. Remember they lost? Yeah, hey, so yeah, I mean, they only gave us two room vouchers, so we gave one to Ellie and me and Ron got a sure. Two, two, two bed, one room, and this is the food. Really Got an impossible bag. Some crab fritters and fries, and orange juice. Now we about to watch the game, eat, shower, and sleep, and get on this flight. How fast is this gonna go? Look, they got seat belt, car seats on the plane. They got car seats on the plane. Trying to keep the camera kind of tight because you know some people be complaining with the film, and I get it. But yeah, I can't really fully show y'all. But this this plane a little blue here. The people don't hear a little blue, here, so I can't really film too much. But I just want to show y'all the seatbelt going across my body. Next time we Ellie. Yes. Oh, we're married. Oh, this is your room? This is my room, dog. Welcome. Welcome to 4B. Very comfortable here. Very comfortable. Let leg run. Very clean. And if I get annoyed of you, press it. Uh oh. Oh, sorry. But we get it. So we did it. Finally back in LA. Did it. It was a journey. Was. LA to Paris, Paris to Senegal. It's not as exciting. <laughs> it's not as exciting. I'm mean, thankful to be home, but it's not as exciting. It's, it's definitely not. Landing in Senegal. Can't wait for the next. That's all I'm thinking about. Oh yeah. The next been travel. Thinking, oh yeah. Been thinking about it. Right. Been thinking about the next one. Everything we do between now and the next travel is just to prepare for the next travel. So y'all see us working, your man. They working. working. They, you know why. Working. You, you, you know why. We get back. And it was great. It was. All right. All right, y'all.